Are you looking to invest in Prince Edward Island multifamily units, otherwise known as apartment buildings? You've come to the right video. So today we're going to cover cap rates, returns, we're going to define what apartments are, governance of those specialty agents that do nothing but apartment buildings, MLS stats, and setting up a search so you don't miss these upcoming new listings. So essentially a cap rate is a term that people just love to use because it sounds so fancy. What's the cap rate or capitalization? Capitalization rate basically says here is the percentage, you, you know, your rate of return on your investment in a traditional manner versus other traditional investments. For instance, taking uh, the S&P 500 index, which averages about 8% per year in one date line, I think from 57 to 2018, and then 26 through 18, I think it was 10 or 11, or vice versa. I'll put it on the screen. But for all intensive arguments for this video, let's just say the S&P 500, which is a great benchmark, returns 10%. With apartment buildings, it's a little bit different. A lot of people think that a high cap rate is a great investment and a low cap rate is not. In fact, it could be the absolute opposite. A high cap rate could be an indication to deferred maintenance. In other words, you're buying a building that's just about to collapse. And that's why the cap rate's 38%. Because when you buy that $100,000 10 bucks, it's gonna cost you 2 million to fix it or tear it down. Whereas if you have a lower cap rate, that can be indicative of a brand new building. So if the cap rate say is four, five, six, that could be telling us that it is probably a newer building. People typically, again, look for that 10% cap rate because they can get it on the S&P 500 sometimes. So that seems to become the number that everybody likes. The difference between the S&P 500 without using margin and real estate is I can buy apartment buildings uh, leverage them and get a much higher cash on cash return, which is defined on, I'm putting this much money down, what is my return based on cash on cash? You can Google that. Uh, you can do it sort of in the stock market with margin, which is lending money from the brokerage by lending your shares out, but we won't get into that. Uh, apartment buildings, you can actually buy with zero money down by pulling equity out of other stuff that you own. And I've done that before. In fact, I bought an 11 unit with no money down, sold it a few years later. So that is possible and it's not that typically sophisticated. Now, as far as the uh, returns, you need to look at each and every building, look at the financials, remove the nonsense from the financials because there's gonna be stuff like amortization amortization, interest, am, um, depreciation, paying yourself, or the owner paying himself a wage. Remove all that, vehicles, and look at the simplified data. Some of the most sophisticated and uh, known investors in apartment buildings in Atlantic Canada that own hundreds if not thousands of units don't necessarily look at the cap rate, they just look at it as a business and whether it will or will not make money. Moving on, activity. Apartments are sort of a, a tricky business, I'll explain why. So as far as MLS activity, I brought the last 12 months up. I believe there was 38 actives, other words, for sale. And there was 80 sales within the last 12 months, which sounds great, not so much, because when I cut it down to anything over a nine unit building, there is one. A apartment is defined anything from a duplex up. So duplex, triplex, quad, five unit, nine unit, 12 unit, 24, 36 unit. Typically a larger building in PEI would be 12 to 36 units. You're not gonna see a lot of two, three, 400 unit buildings in PEI anywhere on the island. We just don't have it. You'd have to go to a major center. Other things to concern yourself with when looking at apartments is governance. In PEI, we have IRAC. Island Regulatory Appeals Commission. It basically says what you can and cannot do with reference to raising rents. Unfortunately for landlords, positively for tenants, just because the price of that duplex has gone up by 100% in the last five years doesn't mean the rent has gone up by 500%. In fact, some years, the allowed amount of percentage to raise the rent is zero, which in the indexed with inflation would actually be closer to minus 1.7, 1.8% for those in finance. Now, it's a specialty. There's very few agents, I can probably count on two or three fingers of that, 
that do nothing but apartment buildings because it's a secret world. And the landlords or owners of these buildings feel that if the apartments are advertised in MLS, the tenants will all leave, which is the furthest thing from the truth. So there's that's a good and a bad thing. It's a bad thing from the vendor's pr perspective, getting more money for the building, putting it on the open mar market and, and having competitive bidding. Uh, however, it, it does allow the purchasers to get better deals, and I've seen this happen where they can buy a building 40, 50, 100,000 less because nobody knows about it. And it's a big secret. And if anyone knows anything about marketing, secrets are not sort of anything to do with marketing. The last thing you want to do is keep something a secret if you want more money for it. That's essentially it. I do advise you to get a search set up, uh, the usual parameters, I'll put them on the screen. That way if anything does come up, You'll be notified right away. If you're a serious buyer for apartments, I know there's buyers out there looking for hundreds of units. You need to tie yourself to someone that's gonna be dedicated to be on that phone or in person making contacts because it's gonna be a lot of work trying to put that larger portfolio together for sale in PEI small population. Many times I'll just tell them to go nationally and I have great contacts in other provinces. Have a great day, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, press the little bell symbol and give the video a thumbs up. Bye for now.